Don't you think so, Tim? Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> oh my! Oh. <laughs> Up! Oh dear, it's coming up. Ooh! It's nice, Mike. Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is this is smoke point. That's the tank of air, and it releases its compressed air, and I think the compressed air is a little colder than ambient air. <laughs> I don't know why it did. Burning, Mike. No, there's nothing for me. Choking. Markle's action photo incorporated. <laughs> it's right in there. <laughs> This is the following day. I've rebuilt the test tank and have trimmed out the sub. It is running beautifully and I'm going to demonstrate it now. Doing the reverse, the reverse run. I'm going to take it down. It's a little forward. Takes a moment or two, it's not a quick process, it's just holding a valve open that's on top of the ballast tank. Let's air out in little increments. Possibly hear the bubbling sound, that's with the LCX skipping air. It's running off a fourth channel radio control system. I've been running it just so the rear fin of the rudder is just off the bottom of this tank, which gives me an idea that it is staying pretty much in position. Bow's gone down here and for, for some funny reason. There's sometimes air bubbles in it. 
and there they go. Now it squares itself away. This is where I've been running it. It's just uh, so the sail is beneath the surface. hoping that it's holding. It hits a little deformity in my uh, plastic sheeting on the bottom that's what twisted it there. I'm just bar barely off the bottom by like a quarter of an inch. And it does stay there forward and back so I pretty much trimmed the front to the rear balance on it. So this is about my final preparations prior to shipping it. I have uh, only to finish up the documentation on it. And uh, then they'll have a, an instruction manual that'll give their Mr. Aishida some information on the proper operation, things to be careful of, that sort of thing on operating the submarine. But this is my test tank. It's an 8-foot tank, 5-foot sub, so I've got a few feet forward and backward movement in it. Prior to this, it was a little shorter, and I couldn't actually put the propeller on it. I had a little trouble with the forward to the bottom stern balance. But since I've uh, made the longer tank, which I did this morning, now I can actually run it back and forth. And it's just deep enough that I can go beneath the sail. I can take the sail beneath the surface for its... Uh, with the complete antenna array to get its final bow to stern trimming which as you can see is holding very well. You can't quite see uh, the bottom of the bottom fin but it is just clearing the bottom of the tank and the fact that it doesn't get stuck coming back tells me that it, uh, it is in fact staying at the trim it's on right now. So this is it, year and a half build is just coming to an end. I'm just doing this final test tonight. I should try to wrap this up in terms of its uh, instruction manual this week and ship it off to Japan. It's been an incredible build, very rewarding, but not at all easy by any stretch of the imagination. This was 99% totally unknown territory to me prior to my proceeding with the project. I took it and he took it on good faith I could do it. and. Uh, here I have it running. It's on a, the Merriman WTC 3.5 system, modified a little bit so I have more blows of the ballast. I have about 20 blows of the ballast. I added a larger compressed air tank to his system just to get more surfacings out of it. And I'm not sure of the exact run time of the whole thing. I haven't actually had it at the lake running, but I'm suspecting there's over an hour run time for safe operation with it. Once it's settled down and is familiar with the way the system works, yesterday I had a couple times, if you saw on the tape, there were some blows of the ballast that looked kind of sinister, and I think what happened is I accidentally tripped the ballast blow side of the throttle because the throttle's right next to it, forward and back of the throttle. All it takes is a little tweak to the left and the ballast blows, so I think in my enthusiasm a couple times I had just tweaked it to the side, and that's what caused it to go through those rather dramatic looked like a fire was going on inside of it, but uh, there's no problem now. I've been running it here all afternoon, trying to trim it out, and there's no problem with the ballast system. It's working perfectly. This is just the end of October. I guess it's the 29th. Tomorrow's Halloween, so this is... Uh, the end of October I'll be shipping it, uh, I'll probably ship it out on Monday if I can get the instruction manual done. I'll bring it to the surface here, I'll get it back in the light and uh, do a real quick blow of the ballast now. Just a second's flip of the switch and up it comes. It does turn a little bit to the left as it torques forward just from propeller torque and it'll do the same on the way back it'll torque the opposite way the whole ship will. If I do it fast it does that 
just the spinning of the propeller in that direction will turn the ship that way. So it really has to be run very slowly, advanced slowly forward and backward. And that way it doesn't really create that torque effect. Looks more realistic in other words. I don't have the rudders connected or I would do some rudder flipping of the rudders, but it's got a lot of power. I had never run the propeller when I was making the propeller. I was this was one of the earlier things I did and I was really really concerned that the propeller wouldn't be pitched, have enough pitch in it to actually move it forward and backward, but as you can see it works great. So I all around it has come out beautifully, the detailing of it, the weathering of it. And today just the final trim fore and aft has come out perfectly with uh, the antenna array in it. I'm taking it down again. I'm down to one light running on this transmitter. I'll bring that in front.